When you're working with copper, if you hammer it, form it, bend it, twist it, any movement of the copper changes the internal structure. In other words, the more you hammer or bend or form, the molecules in copper go together like this. And the more you hammer and bend, the tighter and tighter they get until the copper becomes so brittle it'll just fracture. So in order to not have that fracturing, we anneal the copper. For example, in this piece, you know, it's fairly flexible, but if I keep bending it, you can feel it getting stiffer and stiffer and stiffer. But if I anneal it, and by annealing means heating this copper up until it's red hot. I'm using an oxygen acetylene torch. Keep moving my torch around so I don't stay in one spot too long or I might burn a hole in this. Now that it's all red hot, I'll let it cool. Now that this is cool, look just how soft it is. How flexible. It's just by annealing. And this is soft enough. I can hammer this out till it's just like it was in the beginning. But even that, those mallet strokes there stiffened it up considerably. But we can heat this up until it's red hot and it'll go back to being soft. It's the beauty of annealing. Now it's rigid, just those hammer taps. But I could anneal this again and it'll go back to being soft. And you can see just how soft this is. You know, it's malleable. And this is particularly important if you're working with something like, you know, forming a copper bowl or some abstract shape. You get started and after so many hammer strokes, and I use a wooden mallet for this, but after so many hammer blows or mallet blows, the copper starts getting hard. Then I anneal it, go back to forming, and perhaps anneal it again, and go back to forming again. And the point is that you can do this over and over and over again until you form the shape that you had envisioned.